gosh, look at this. I haven't been down in Gary's garden in a long time. I can't do a garden tour because he is really busy today. So I'm just going to do a morning vlog. I'm doing some videos. I'm going through my camera and I decided to come down here because he is putting together some pools and he found after he dug out the soil, seashells. Not something that came out from something from the beach, but actual shells. Let me show you something while he goes and gets a brush. He's going to show me. Uh, what's underneath. Look at this. This was collected here. Can you see that? Isn't that gorgeous? Can you imagine we are up on top of a hill and this is what's underneath the soil when you dig way down? This is unbelievable. My kids used to go nuts bringing all this stuff home. They would be walking around. Why well, say home? They're walking around. They're digging out the hillside a little bit. Just literally with their hand and they would bring all these shells back. Some of them were really tiny. This is one of the nicest ones I've kept. So it's really hard to believe that this whole area was once underwater. But he's going to brush some of the... What are you brushing away? Sand? Uh, the clay. He's brushing away the clay. Let's look at this. And then I am going to leave him. But he's going to have to promise us a full garden tour. Look, and this isn't, I mean, I just haven't seen any, look at this. He's got an arbor. Oh, it's probably a video. We're probably infringing on his, oh my gosh, are those melons? Oh, we are not doing a garden tour. So you dug this out and you found the shells? Yeah. Oh, look. Shell, so we have tons of calcium here. The shell fragment. See, all, this, all these were shells. And all this area here, that's just from the rainwater hitting it and dissolving it and turning it back into calcium. Wow, that's minerals. Yep. That's why we don't need to lime our soil because we've already got plenty of calcium. And probably and, salt. And salt and sea minerals too. I tried the Epsom salt once. I should do a video on that and I killed everything. All the plants died. Uh, we cannot add any salt because we have natural mineral salt and calcium already in our soil. So if you add something like Epsom salt, so many people say it's the wonder thing to add to your garden. It's not. It can actually really cause havoc. So I don't add that. So this you did make. This is not cement here that you laid or anything. No, this is our bedrock, which is shale. And it's got veins of calcium in it. So this is all calcium, like chalk. But it's okay. calcium carbonate. So that these are all what's left over of the shells. So you get bits and pieces like this. So this area here, that would be a piece like that. It's filled oh, with wow. clay. So Isn't that fascinating? I wasn't even planning on doing a vlog down here. I was going to do something else, but this is a perfect morning vlog to do. Wow. So, so this will be all covered. Yeah, this will be covered by my kitty pool. Then I'll lay down the black plastic, put water back in it, I'll backfill it, and then I'll string my trellis up. Like this is the trellis I made, I've done a video on that. And this is my next one. And I'll just have this set up the way this one's set up. If I back up too far, you won't be able to hear them. So I'm trying to get close, is what I'm trying to do. All right, well, I'm going to, so nothing, no black. You don't put any of the black uh, sheeting no, on that. No, nothing. Just on, uh, on top of the pool. And this is what my garden's built on. So when people say, you know, what's the soil like underneath, this is it. That's, that's the soil. That's, that's bedrock. <laughs> so everything here is what I've brought in and built up. So that's your wood chips. That's the wood chips. And and that's what he tried to grow in. That's what you can't grow in. That's what Look I at can't grow in. And these are the pepper roots that. I'm trying to avoid by growing in containers and kiddie pools. That's why I'm growing in totes, because these pepper roots are really invasive. Wow. Tell me about it. And they can get into the totes if you put the holes on the bottom, so you got to be careful on that. Well, I, well, I came down here to see this because you told me you were covering it. And I know you don't want, we're not going to do a garden tour today. No. We'll let you finish. I just want to know one thing, and I know I'm not doing, what is that? Is that the um, melon or is that a watermelon? That's Kajari melon. That's a Kajari melon. Look at that. 
Oh, cool. You had a couple of them growing. Yeah. I never planted those. No, I started the seeds for you. That's right, didn't yeah. I? And I've got a small one here. That was, I moved this from outside. And oh, there is. That was covered in the um, cages. Oh, well, look at so that. So that's dwarfed. Okay, I, I know that I'm not, you didn't want to do a garden tour okay, today. Yep. So that was just to come down and kind of touch base on some beautiful. And then I'll put, if I leave my shell, I had this in the house. Will you bring it up for me? And yes. I might just take a walk. Isn't that beautiful? Jeez, the stuff you can find in, in the grounds here is amazing. I had a whole bunch. I think the kids have their own. They had found some small ones and they kept it. They were fascinated. Okay, I'm going to take a walk and I'll end this. I'll let you do your thing. So that's, that's a treat, because I wasn't planning on doing that. I just wanted to kind of say hello. I'm working on some videos. I've got this thing. YouTube had contacted us and said that they opened up what's called like a membership. Please do not ever think that anything is going to be different. I literally might put stuff up there I normally would never put on YouTube if somebody wanted to look through it, you know, raw, unedited stuff. But that's basically it. I'll take a quick walk. Some of you have asked about the birds that are dying back east, and I'll get more into it another time because I have all the details. I've been doing research on that. Let me say that it is not happening in Southern California. It's only happening in four or five states. And the ornithologists and everybody, even Audubon Society, has been trying to figure out what it is. It's only happening to a certain group of birds, like songbirds. These are birds that are insect eaters or eating small uh, types of seeds off of plants. They have no idea what it is. And like I said, I'll get more into that and maybe on another vlog. The backside of my garden. So as far as feeding hummingbirds, it's not in hummingbirds at all. So you don't have to worry about that. This may, I know they told you, let's back up for a minute. They, this may not even be contagious, is what I was going to say. And they are asking people to take their bird feeders down. That seeds, suet. Uh, this is not, this has nothing to do with hummingbirds at all. So please keep that in mind. This is not a hummingbird disease. It may not even be a disease. I know from personal experience, and I won't get into it, there are certain things that can affect birds because birds system is very different than other animals. If it turns out to be something like a pesticide, it's going to be very difficult to find. Very difficult. I'm going to go sit down on the bench and finish that up. So I came up the hill. I hiked up the hill just now and I thought I was going to walk over there on my bench, but I decided to come over here and sit by the bathtub. We have no sun, so the water is barely going. There's a little lizard there. Isn't this beautiful? I want to get this planted up. I'm just going to get it done really soon, I think. That's Chia. So as I was saying, they don't know what it is, but if it turns out to be some sort of pesticide, whether they're eating insects that have pesticide in it, whether it's coming out of something growing in, in fields, it's interesting it started around the time that things were growing, so it's hard to say. They're going to have to figure it out what it is. There was another thing going on on the west coast where birds, yes, were falling out of the sky. That they know what it was. That was the severe heat that was going through and birds do not do well in heat. Many other animals don't do you know well in heat too. So that was from heat. But this is something else. So they're going to have to figure it out. Some years back there was a food, a seed, that was for feeding wild birds and accidentally it got sprayed. Well, let's say it accidentally got released without testing and the food was being treated so it wouldn't get insects like on store shelves. Well, without them realizing it, it was actually, it, it, it was causing a lot of havoc to birds. It took out a lot of birds. That was quickly rectified, but still cause major, major problems. The only seeds I feed the birds that when I put bird food out in all our gardens is I buy food from the pet store or from a grain and feed mill, someplace that is designed for animals or people. Not, 
I don't buy wild bird seed, okay? Let's just put it that way. I buy from a mill. I make sure that it's food that I could eat as well as them. Or if you go to the pet store, that food they know, you know, is got to be good because it's for your pet birds. And that's, I've talked about, I've got videos on that. I'll buy parakeet mix, which has got millet, canary seed, and there might be some other small seeds in there depending on the mix. I also buy sometimes lettuce seed. I buy it by 25 pound sacks. So I can put that out hoping the goldfinches will eat it, but they really haven't done much with it. I don't know if anybody's eating it. So that could be a waste. And then a medium to small sunflower seed, usually black oil, doesn't really matter. The birds will eat that. And then occasionally peanuts from the grocery store for us. A lot of times they have been roasted, but that's okay. As long as they're not salted. And that's what the birds get here. So they're going to have to figure out what is causing the problems in those few states that the problem is happening. They've tested right now for viruses. They cannot find a virus. So it may not even be contagious. It might be something they're eating. Something they're flying through. Something they inhaled somewhere. It could be something like that. It, time will tell. Hopefully time will tell. And you know, things have happened before where they just disappear and then you don't see it anymore. And it could have been a one-time thing. Something could have been sprayed somewhere. Or a bunch of birds that were migrating flew through it and then till it got in their system, till it, it went into their sinus cavities, whatever it's doing, and then till it took them out. As far as pox, you know, we, we've got West Nile periodically and pox. If the birds can stay healthy during pox, a lot of them live. It's very similar to chicken pox. It's not chicken pox. See, we can't catch it from them, but it is a cycle. And I don't want to go, you know, into that either. But if they can get through it, they'll be scarred up. We've got some um, towies around here that had pox. You clearly can see it. One of them was missing an upper beak. Sometimes they'll lose toes because they'll have a pox and it will get infected and then the toe will fall off but the bird will live. So different things can happen with pox. West Nile is different. West Nile the bird either gets it and doesn't do well with it and takes them out or they build an immunity to it. And that hurt a lot of our scrub jays years ago. I think the ones we have now have built up an immunity towards it. So time will tell what in the world they're dealing with and I'm just as anxious as you all are to find out. As far as not feeding the birds, I have no idea if it's making a difference or not. I don't know if it's good not feeding the birds, you know, because they congregate and they think that it's passing. And then on the other hand, oh, it got real windy. You probably can't even hear, hear me now with the mic. On the other hand, it could be doing the opposite where the birds are weak for whatever reason and not getting enough food in them and having to forage harder. It could be taking them out, so I don't know. Go ahead and feed your hummingbirds. Make sure you clean your feeders really good. I take my feeders in every single day. The problem with my feeders are they're usually emptied within hours. We have so many and I bring them in, I scrub and clean them and put them back out. I never just bring them in and refill them. I always clean them out. You clean them and put them out, but there's really not much that anybody can do with the hummingbirds, so they're fine. A few of you said you thought you saw pox. The research shows, yes, a hummingbird may be able to get pox, but they've only got one that one or two, a couple of them that they found was pox. What you may think is pox could actually be something else. It could be an injury. It could be a fungus problem, a bacteria problem, depending on what they got into. Hummingbirds have a habit of poking their beaks into everything. And then also if a bird, just like a person gets stressed, that's when your secondary problems set in and that's usually what takes them out. I haven't seen pox itself here in Southern California where I'm at in hummingbirds. I have seen other things, but I haven't seen pox itself. I am not saying there isn't. I'm just saying I haven't seen it. Again, pox has to be tested because it may look like something else. Generally, they'll get that around their face. They'll get it around their eyes and a lot of times on their feet. But again, so does fungus and so do certain mites that, you know, scaly mites. They can get like on budgies all around their eyes, their beak, their feet. So there are different types of other things, especially if an animal is not finding enough food, isn't healthy. That's when a lot of these things set in. I wanted to be upbeat today, not on this. 
So for an upbeat thing, I have not seen sick birds here, which is really good and very encouraging. All the birds seem really good. If they can find enough food, they can stay strong and healthy, just like people, their immune system should be strong enough to fight off any little thing they may pick up. So that's it, so we got a treat. We got to go into Gary's garden. I'm getting very close to doing my chair garden. Not today, I'm still working a little bit in the rainbow garden. I'm gonna get some videos worked on. Again, don't worry about the join thing. What you could do is click on the join button and there is a little video explaining what I'm trying to do. I, I got reamed. Let, let's talk about this for a minute. I went and asked YouTube a while back, a couple months ago, I guess, a question. They have a little box where I could go ask questions, not an email, actually like a live person. And he looked over my account and he said, oh, your account looks really good. Everything is going good. You're doing fantastic. And he goes, let me read further into your account. Apparently I was flagged. And I said, what's wrong? You don't tell people to like and subscribe. I can't, couldn't even believe that he knew that. I said, not usually. <laughs> and he said, you have to tell people to like and subscribe and to give a thumbs up and, and hit that bell. I said, well, don't they know to do that? And he told me, no, a lot of people don't. It helps build the channel and it gives you also personally more an incentive to keep going. And do, it's kind of like somebody cheering you on and make more, make more. Who knows? Maybe I put two or three up a day. I don't know. But yeah, he, I was flagged on my account. He saw right away and I was really surprised. He said, you do not tell people in your videos to like and subscribe. I'll try to remember. I don't know. I figured if you like it and you want to watch us, you'll subscribe. You'll hit the bell. The bell lets you know if we go live or if I'm putting up a video and you can look at it and decide if you want to see it or not. I may try off and on to do that since I was basically reamed by YouTube for not doing it. Gary does. He's got a, a thing that he says on the end of his, but I forget. I think because I'm constantly making videos and some of them are the videos I make are for myself and I don't even plan on putting them up. It might be, I might go into the chair garden and work. Let's say I'm gonna work on that yellow chair. I'm gonna do something really special. And I wanna remember what I did because I've done special things in my pizza garden down there too. And sometimes I videotape that stuff just for myself. And I may not put much in it, you know, so, well, anyway, so I got rain for that. So I'll try to remember to say, please like and subscribe. And if you want, hit the little bell and that will let you know that when we put up a video, it will come on and give you a notice. That's it. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I'm gonna get some stuff done. I'm trying to get this finished up here. And I, well, I, I got a lot of stuff to do. So with that, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye everybody, bye-bye. My chia fell. You know what? kind of like that. You know why? Gives a place for lizards to crawl on. Oh, I got an idea. I'm going to do something with that. I might trim the back one. Let me see. Let's do this one-handed and you get to watch me firsthand fall in. Let me pick this up. See if I can just put that one. No, that's not going to work unless I stake it. And this I really like. The little leaves will rot in the water. That's a floater. Yeah, I'll put it on the floater and trim some of those leaves off. I like that. See how a lizard can now come and climb onto the leaves and get water? Even a frog. Maybe I'll end up with my own frog. Cool. This is amazing. Chia seeds out of the freezer that have been there like one to two years. And it grew into such a beautiful, beautiful plant. Still hasn't flowered. I'm waiting to see if it's going to flower. Okay, I've got to go in. And I've got to get stuff done. Back to work. Cool.